Well, I think I'm on morning number five. I think I'm just gonna set this aside. I was gonna go ahead and carve the inside, but I think I'm just gonna set this aside for a while and work on the outside of this. I've got this finger plane. It's a 10 millimeter, and, and it's not really a finger plane. It's a palm combination, palm finger plane, if you will. I have highly modified this and, and changed the shape of this shoe. I think it was extremely uh, arched at one time and I've leveled it out a little bit. It's still arched, but it's, it's a little flatter than it was. I've got this blade absolutely as sharp as you can get a blade. It's super, super sharp. It'll cut you just by looking at it. So I don't look at it very close. Anyway, I've got it in here and uh, I barely have any of it exposed because this stuff is crazy hard and the grain just goes every way it can go. It's gonna take a month of Sundays to carve this. It is not gonna go easy. Even with this thing as sharp as it is, it's still gonna be hard to carve. I've got a tooth blade for this. I may have to just carve this whole thing with a tooth blade. In fact, I think I'm gonna try that because this is really hard to push. Because the grain goes every direction you can imagine, I think I'm gonna just go try the tooth blade and see if I can make progr better progress that way. Well, I have the tooth blade on here. I don't know if you can see that or not. And I have it really, really sharp also. And just a little bit of it exposed. And this wood fights carving. That's all I can tell you. It don't want to be carved, period. So how is it that I'm going to build the world's finest mandolin ever built by a human if the wood won't let me do that? I don't know. It's, it really, it really is hard to carve. I am not kidding. You know, I've carved bird's eye maple and that's tough, but I don't think it was as tough as this. take long to get tired and I got almost nothing carved so I guess I'm going back to the uh, plane blade not because this tooth blade ain't doing it I took the tooth blade out I went back to the plain solid blade and it's better at least for hogging the wood off uh, especially if you get it set just right and I think I have it set better than I've had it set before so I, it seems to be carving reasonably well right now so while while the sun is shining, I'm going to make as much hay as I can because when it don't want to carve, it is difficult. It's carving reasonably well right now. Still harder than just about anything I've ever tried to carve. Well, you can see what I'm doing, so I'll uh, just do a whole lot more of that before I turn the camera back on. Well, here's a point that's very counterintuitive. You know, this is high here and it's curving down this way. Typically, you want to carve that way. Not on this piece of wood. On this piece of wood, believe it or not, and I'm not just saying this, you've got to carve from low to high against the grain and it carves pretty good. In fact, it's so counterintuitive, it's just ridiculous, but it's working and it's carving pretty well. Not much tear out and it's uh, carving, you know, with some fairly good shavings here. The only problem is it's hard to get this rim down here. You can't get low enough. Um, the most ideal way, but it works. It just doesn't want to be carved that way. 
and it definitely don't want to be carved that way. And that way it don't carve at all. Yeah, it just, it only carves this direction. I don't know why. Yeah, that's really counterintuitive and it's just a good example of what I keep saying about you got to find the way the wood wants to be carved. Otherwise, you're just fighting it the whole time. This really carves well at this angle, but the problem is getting that out. And I don't know how I'm going to do that exactly. I'll give you an update when I make more progress. Well, this is probably about day five on this, maybe six, I'm not sure. Just working a few hours each morning on it, or an hour or two each morning. I'm trying to get rid of some of this extra wood, and I gotta be honest, this thing's been really hard to carve. This is some really hard wood to carve. Sure, I said before, and probably even in this video, you know, if I had used this on the very first mandolin, there wouldn't have been a second. Because I probably would have thought all wood would carve this difficult. But this is really difficult wood to carve. Before I get too far into it, I always like to try to draw in the uh, detail. So I've got to draw in detail that will kind of match this detail now. So something like that for the moment. It's, we'll refine it as we go, but it just gives me a ballpark idea of what I'm doing. Leaving is the only way I know that is true. But no matter where I go, there's a memory of you. You just get lots of tear out no matter which way you go with this stuff. It does not like to carve. The only way I've been able to carve it is following this angle all the way across. On this side, it's the same angle as this. It doesn't make quite make sense because I think when you close that, it would be opposite angles, but I guess it's the way the tree grew or something. I really don't know. But it does seem to carve at this 145 degree angle and, and, and really only at that 145 degree angle. Everything else doesn't, doesn't work. I'm sure this is a little bit like watching paint dry because it's not making much progress. So I'll keep working at it and figuring out things. I've tried using my sanders. I've tried using my Dremel tool and they just burn. They don't and they go real slow. It's not simple. Cause how do you take a memory and put it away for good? Somehow I can't forget them all, but the good Lord knows I should. starting to get there but it's going to take a lot of work yet. This must be day six or seven carving this and uh, I am not having luck carving it in my conventional methods so I've been using this burr on my Dremel tool. It works but it's very slow and another thing another characteristic of this wood is that 
let's say you're carving right here and it's extremely hard. Well, right there, it can sink in half the depth of the ball almost instantly. In other words, there's real hard spots and then there's real soft spots and they're right next to each other. And boy, you really have to have good control over this thing so that you don't stick it down through. It really digs a hole quickly. So you really have to pay attention to what you're doing. So far, I'm doing pretty well with it. I'm pretty used to it, but it, you really uh, do need to have that caution if you're doing this for the first time. It's getting pretty close. This is probably, like I always say, 80% uh, of it uh, only takes 20% of the time. This last 20% is gonna take 80% of my time. So it's gonna take me a while to get the rest of this smooth. I already know it doesn't scrape very well. I've tried that before, but at least on a different piece of wood I've tried it. You never know, this piece of wood might be different. I doubt it because it feels just about like the other one for the carving. So I'm gonna sharpen up a scraper and, and see what it does, but I have a feeling it won't do much. Just tear the wood. In a recent shop talk, I mentioned that it should never take you more than about five minutes to sharpen any blade. Well, I wasn't thinking of <clears throat> the scraper and the way I sharpen a scraper. Admittedly, my method is kind of an old school violin method. And that is that I sharpen one edge and get it razor sharp like this. And it takes a while because it's such a funky edge. You know, it's, it's such a curved edge like that. So it takes a while to get this razor sharp little longer than a knife or a chisel or something. So this takes a little more than five minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes, but, but you can do it. Then after I get it razor sharp, I burnish one edge over. So you've got that razor sharp edge curled over, but it takes a while to sharpen one of these. I keep this side flat and I put a very slight angle on this. This is the medium stone I'm using right at the moment, Arkansas stone, and the medium is pretty darn smooth in this case. In fact, it's, it's difficult to even tell the difference between the medium and the fine. It's a very fine medium, if you will. I'm using the medium to try to cut it a little bit faster to get a real sharp edge, and I'll switch over to the fine here in a minute. The idea is you try to keep your angle pretty consistent and you should be able to see oil picking up along the edge pretty consistently. Right there, I'm not picking up any oil, so I suspect that there's a low spot or a hot, you know, however you want to refer to it on this side, a caved in spot, if you will. So I'm trying to get that consistent. You notice it still hasn't picked up the oil right there. So more than likely that's a spot that's somehow deformed. Closing it in a little bit now. Absolute crazy razor sharp is a necessity though if it's going to work on this kind of wood. It's feeling fairly sharp but not crazy sharp yet. Incidentally when you do sharpen these you have to get rid of the previous burnished edge and so I did do that. I flattened it off completely flat on the stone by just laying it flat there and polishing it around till that burnished edge was gone. Well, I'm gonna keep doing that and I'll show you what it looks like when I burnish it. I switched over to the fine stone and have got this thing pretty darn sharp. At least it feels like it. And now I'm gonna hone it on the leather. This is just leather. You have to drag it. You cannot go toward the leather, of course, because you'll cut it. Somewhere in there, I did that. And you're thinking, what is that? Well, with this arthritis and trying to hold on to this thing, I dropped it once and it fell on the concrete floor. Then it took a long time to resharpen it in that area. And then I just got it about sharp and I dropped it again and I reached to grab it this time and I drove it right into my hand. <laughs> it didn't cut it real deep, but it cut up pretty long. It's not a bad, bad cut or anything, but it's not good. 
That's the other consequence of having all this arthritis. You just drop everything all the time. We ought to be in the ballpark there of having it fairly razor sharp. Oh yeah, yeah, it's cutting hair right off. Yep, in fact, it's very sharp. But I'm gonna keep honing, because the sharper you get it, the better off you are. Yeah, it's shaving the hair very well just about anywhere I put it now. Someone asked, why do we always shave hair? Well, that's just a real good test of an edge. If it'll shave hair, it's a good edge. Some people cut paper and things like that, but the problem with cutting paper and things like that is they often also dull your edge a little bit, especially when you get a real fine edge like this. Okay, I guess I'll get the burnisher out and I'll show you what that looks like. I've said before this is one of those things that makes me cringe when I do this. Mostly it was because I didn't have a good burnishing tool in the past. I was using a valve stem out of a car, which works pretty well actually. But this burnishing tool with the handle on it is just safer. Anyway, you take this edge now and you, you, you roll it like this and you just roll the edge over. And you roll from the side you sharpened. You would not want to slip and come down on this, just like that was a slip. And the idea is you want to curl it as cleanly as you can without any bumps. So that gives you a long curled edge. Let's see if it's sharp enough to curl anything on this stuff. Yeah, it is. It's it's curling it. At least it is right now. Once it gets smooth, it might change because it's pretty rough right now. I may have to carve the rest of this back with the scraper if it'll, if it'll do it. Because uh, I'm not doing very well with anything else. Yeah, that's, that's actually working pretty well. You can see all the shavings and stuff. The good thing about a scraper too is you can get down in this little valley thing and and you know around here what I call the marble track yeah this is scraping far better than that other piece scraped so far scraping is the only thing that's worked well on this because everything else has fought me well once again this will be a lot like watching paint dry because it's just going to take a whole lot of this I would say a whole lot equals a couple of hours worth. Now that I say that, it is actually scraping really well, but if you, I don't know if you can see how you turn it one way and you can see real rough grain, even though it's scraping fairly smoothly. But one way the grain is kind of rough, the other way the grain is pretty smooth. At least it's getting me in the ballpark and then I'll be able to sand it, I guess. I'm gonna continue that way, at least for right now. I just noticed a little uh, something here in the middle of the uh, mandolin. It's kind of, it's just a natural thing, but there's a circle right here. It's a, it's a little hard to see, but it's just like an outline circle that's just in the wood. And because it's quarter sawn, it, it kind of goes all the way around. It's kind of cool. It's in a way, I, I don't know. It, in one way, I hope it shows up. In another way, I'm not so sure I want it to show up, but there's quite a bit going on in this wood. I got this scraper really sharp, and as sharp as it is, I mean, it really shaved hair very well. And it's doing a fairly good job on this. Even as sharp as it is, this kind of wood, if you can look close, you can see the tear out in the wood. It just tears. You can probably see that. I think you can in the camera there. 
it just it just tears it doesn't smooth you know cut smooth like it does on most woods it's because the grain just swirls it just goes everywhere it's really difficult to do anything with this I, I've just about given up carving and I'm just trying to scrape it down to shape and the scraping of course takes longer but there's less chip out I don't know it's just it just is what it is and it's just literally killing my hands to do this you go one way and part of the grain cuts well and you go another way and a different part cuts well so you just kind of keep doing that but the problem is that the opposite part of the grain doesn't cut well and it tears so either no matter which way you go or how you try something's tearing all the time about the best overall is just to go at a 90 to the grain it seems to work about as well as anything but the problem is you can't carve everything well that way like for instance carving this little channel around the outside sweet spot area it's difficult to carve that channel unless you're going like this if i had used this wood on the first mandolin there would never have been a second it's just that hard well i'm not making very fast progress but i feel like it's still making progress so i'll show you the what's going on every so often in the camera i was trying to work on the sweet spot a little bit and get a little more dip in it so i went back to the finger plane i just wanted to show you up close what it actually does if you can see it it'll cut and then it hits the jagged things and it just bounces and um and then it doesn't matter which way you go if i'm going the other way it hits and bounces it just it just is the most unpleasant feel when you're trying to cut like this it it just it's just i don't know it's like fingernails on a chalkboard to me at, you know as, as i carve this kind of stuff i'm used to having this thing just glide across and it does not glide across this kind of wood oh my gosh it's just terrible it's really annoying to cut this. In certain directions, it'll cut a little bit. Like right here, I'm not doing too bad, but it's still bouncing quite a bit. You know, you can see, I don't know if it's showing up in the camera, but it's just really difficult. It's very frustrating. I've got to get the sweet spot lowered some, and I don't know any other way to do it. I mean, if I had some kind of a round ball sander or something, or a rasp would almost work. I've got a round ball rasp somewhere, or I had one. I might try it, but the problem, the Dremel tool attachments I have are too small. They're just way too small to get anything done. This is carving real good right here, right now. So I'll count my blessings on that one. That's actually carving very well right there. Wow, that's the way it's supposed to carve. And there it goes to the bounce again right here. Maybe if I come back this way. Yeah, it's still bouncing pretty bad right there. there. And there's other problem with these um, where it bounces like that is that's really difficult to get that out of there so it takes a lot of extra sanding and scraping to get that out we've tumbled and we've tussled till my heart's bruised black and blue and baby you've hurt me and i know that i've hurt you well i still cry sometimes Well, it's still crazy slow going. I've found a little bit of a trick that helps. If you go ahead and you just put up with the chatter here and, and the bouncing and the catching and all that junk and you, all the tear out, if you can put up with that a little bit, 
which you can hear it there. It just sounds terrible and it feels terrible too on your hands, especially sore hands. Well, anyway, once you do that, then you got it all tore up. If you cut a 90 across it, you can get rid of it and cut out a lot of wood too, you know. Um, you, you're actually removing wood faster that way than by just trying to go one direction. Not something you would just naturally think to do, but it works. And uh, you gotta do whatever works on this stuff. I've got a fairly decent channel around it now. Um, needs a little bit more refining, but I don't want a deep channel anyway, so I'm okay with a very shallow channel. Some people would say you have to have a deep channel, but let me just explain some of the physics there that's going on. If you can picture a thin piece of sheet metal, and you know it's very flexible, you can just fold it and bend it and everything, but if you put a bend down it, and you know, a, a small bend or a couple of small bends, well it becomes very rigid. Well that's the problem with this thing here too. If you get this too deep and you know it becomes much more rigid than if you just let it have a nice sl uh, slow gradual slope and then you carve it nice and thin, it'll have more vibration than if you um, make that channel too deep, it becomes very stiff. So anyway, that's my theory. I'm sticking to it. It also, the flatter it is, the more volume and more woody sound you'll have. The higher dome and um, more arching and things you get in it, the higher pitch it's going to have and less projection. These are not just things I know. These are things I've read about Stradivari and, you know, just different things. And it seems to work. It, I have to say that it... it it works for me, so that's what I stick with. Trying to get the bulk of this in really good shape so that I can start working on the detail. The detail being this area up in here where I can cut that all down and then smooth it out and then finally carve the rose in the back. Cause how do you take a memory and put it away for good? And as I've said before, you want to look at it like this a lot, where you can see the symmetry from one side to the other. Looks pretty good. Now the difference on the back is that this doesn't taper down quite so much. It does taper down, and right now I've got it a little too flat. It needs to taper some more. On the back, this is a real long, gradual taper. On the front, it comes down much quicker, partly for the fretboard extension. gonna just keep at it and I'll show you progress for the last 30 or 40 minutes I've been working on the detailed area here um, in this area and I've been doing that mostly with this little tiny exacto knife with the round blade or curved blade just detail it like this with the scrape scraping action till I get it smooth you really can't sand these kinds of areas easily you can touch up the sand you can touch them up with sanding after you get them pretty smooth but you really got to get them smooth with something else first and this little exacto knife really is working very well i take the blade and i even sharpen it a little bit more on my arkansas whetstone Take a memory and put it away for good. Somehow I can't forget them all, though the good Lord knows.
as I should. That's probably as far as I'm going to get for today, but that's starting to look pretty nice. It's uh, a little rough around here yet, but uh, I think some lighter, lighter scraping on this might get rid of some of that roughness. It's helping a little bit by scraping it real light. I'm not putting much pressure on it. That seems to help a little, but that might just kind of help even it out a little bit so that I can sand it better. I want to say that I've got that pretty close to finish, but I bet when I start carving the inside, I'll find things I want to change. That's my, that's my guess. Well, like I said, I'm going to have to take a break. My hands are just gone for this morning. Well, yet another day has dawned. I'm working on these plates and uh, the top plate, the back plate. The top plate is just about finished on the outside. So is the back plate as far as that goes. But I'm believing that I, and with the measurements and everything, I've been checking and um, this is really a little bit thick through here yet. So I'm going to narrow this down, lower this down, that which will affect all of this because I'll have to recarve a lot of this. But uh, I just realized that, it, that I left that extra thick there and I really don't want it extra thick. In fact, I want it about the same thickness as this. And I realize you can't see the thickness here and I don't give out these measurements, unfortunately. I just want to make sure it's about the same. It's roughly 50 thousandths thicker here. So that's a pretty good chunk that we're going to take off. They don't have to be exactly the same. I just don't want this a lot thicker than the rest of the instrument. All right, so now that I've got that thinned down to about where I want it, I need to recarve the detail here. Cause how do you take a memory and put it away for good? Somehow I can't forget them all, though the good Lord knows I should. comparing the, the way they look. They don't have to be identical exactly, but uh, if you can get them fairly close, I think it makes the whole instrument look a little better. I kind of think these are a little tall still, so I'm going to go ahead and take this all down a little bit more. You know, after you look at it for a few days, you, you start seeing things a little differently. That's why I always say it's just it's just like when you used to write papers and things you would if you set it down and come back to it and read it a day later you'll always find things that you didn't notice the first time. Well that's the way it is with this. If you set it down and you come back to it a day or two later you'll notice things that you just didn't see. Just like this being that thick I just didn't really realize it was still that thick. I don't want it bulky. I want it everything nice and slim and trim. Yet I want to be able to see the detail, of course. You won't find it on a well-traveled highway. Not even on a dusty gravel road. That's looking much better, I think. It's still maybe a little thick. I'm not really sure. I gotta, like I said, I'll think on it a while. And once I carve the inside and everything, I may decide to drop it down some more. You can always go thinner. Making it go thicker is very difficult. You have to want to be there when you find it. 
for it's not on any maps I know. Out across the field through the pasture. I'm going to take the Dremel tool now because I just can't use my fingers as well to carve all this detail in here now. And I can hold this in my hand better. And I can get this detail worked out and then we'll scrape it smooth. Climb along the steep and rocky trail When you cross that little creek in the valley You'll see that vine-covered church on the hill That vine-covered church above the valley Where the congregation gathered to pray Built with their hands from the forest Now stands as a marker for the grave it's the old ugly duckling thing. You, you can see all the marks that it leaves. You just kind of have to make it look ugly to make it look nice. And it's just kind of a vicious circle. You just keep going, you know, and keep working. So now I'll take my really sharp X-Acto blade here and I'll scrape the detail back in it. Level out all these bumps. And again, the direction you scrape makes all the difference. And if you notice you're getting tear out, you have to instantly go the other way. Otherwise, you just make it worse. Imagine there's a lot of folks out there that don't realize how much you can carve just with a scraping action of a blade. This is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. The softer the wood is, believe it or not, the harder it is to get it smooth. Perfectly smooth, that is. Because everything affects that little light, flimsy grain. Well, I'm not real happy with the way this one turned out now. It's gotten kind of sharp. I'm going to see if I can't find a way to round it back out. And though all the windows are shattered, you can still hear them singing at night. Her brothers and sisters who worship gather in that holy place still. Though they lie head rest in the valley Beneath that vine covered church on the hill The thing that uh, you might not realize about this I've mentioned about the grain direction of course But when you have a curve carving through grain like this You literally sometimes have to change direction um, Of the way you're cutting it within a millimeter or so uh, even even sometimes less than that I would say because Like the grain will be going this way and now it's going the opposite way because you've gone through a carving here Or you're going down kind of like downhill and the grain changes as it reaches the bottom of this little valley. It'll change direction It really is uh, important to understand that grain direction as you're trying to smooth this out in the camera, it probably looks like I'm doing the same thing, but be, it's the same motion, but like here I'm scraping this way, and here I'm scraping this way. And, and you can't really tell that. I do it fairly quickly. That vine-covered church above the valley Where the congregation gathered to pray Built with their hands from the forest now stands as a marker for the grave. There's what it looks like after smoothing it a lot. It still could use a little bit of light sanding in there and things, but now it's it's sandable now, where before it was pretty rough. 
It wouldn't take much now to get it the rest of the way smooth. But uh, the scraper is really something to learn how to use and uh, it is your friend when you're doing detailed work on an instrument. Okay, I'm going to do some evaluation here and decide whether I'm ready to start carving the insides. I'm not exactly sure if I am yet or not. Thought I'd show you what that looks like when you wet it down a little bit there. Pretty amazing. And you can just see I've only wet down a little bit of it. The reason I'm wetting it down is to raise the grain for the sanding. I want to try to get this outside as close to finished as I can before I start on the inside. And the main reason for that is because I just want to know the thickness and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, um, you know, have to sand a ton off the back of this to get it smooth and then change my thicknesses a lot. So if I can get it fairly close now, it'll be better when I get down to the final details of the thicknesses. It's really going to be pretty. Well, my friends, I'm sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding. You know, I told you before is that this is about the hardest wood there is to carve. Well, it's also about the hardest wood there is to sand. You can see sanding and sanding and then yet you can still see scratches and things from the tool work that we were doing, you know, where it was chattering and stuff. And uh, trying to sand those out is just almost impossible. It just takes forever. The chatter marks is where it's soft. In between there, it's very hard. And you've got to lower that hardness down. You've got to drop it down to get to the, to the soft sanding marks. Oh, it's difficult. Like I said before, I'm sure glad I didn't use this on the very first instrument because I would never have built a second. One more point about sanding this is I uh, often talk about sanding just with my fingers because I can feel it better. But the problem with this stuff is those hard spots are so crazy hard and your fingers will sand the soft spots and then you start feeling all the lumps in the wood. I'm using this rubber sanding block. That way I can span those hard spots and knock the hard spots down to the uh, level of the soft spots. Now, I have sanded and sanded and sanded on this side over here and it doesn't look very different than this side. You know, it's really not that much better it, for all the sanding I've done. And I've sanded quite a bit. Any other type of wood would have already been smooth, I'm pretty sure. Well, my friends, I have spent at least three hours, probably, sanding this side over here. And it's still, I wouldn't say completely finished, but it is about as slick and smooth as any piece of wood I've ever felt in my life. Um, this side I haven't even started on yet. And you can see the difference in color, but that's just because this one here has pretty much sanded glass smooth, and this one is still um, scrape smooth. And, you know, even up in this area here, I still have a lot of detail sanding to do. Wow, I'm not kidding. I, I've sanded almost completely nonstop for about three hours. The most I've stopped has been about 30 seconds and just constantly sanded the whole time. Pushing as hard as I can push with my hands as sore as they are. Every once in a while I'll stop to give my hand a break for about five seconds and then I go right back to it. It's just incredibly hard stuff to sand. So I'm really looking forward to sanding the other side. I mean I've got, I'll have six hours of sanding just in the outside of this back. And I'm not kidding. It's the hardest stuff I've ever sanded in my life, bar none.